As we are all aware of, the law of attraction believes that any negative or positive energy that I emit to the universe will attract the same negative or positive experiences into my life. Sort of like a magnet. Hmm, but I do have one problem with this law of attraction. I mean, this is not a perfect world we're living in. Negative things keep happening around us. Is it my fault? Did I not manifest correctly? Am I not allowed to feel these negative emotions? One of my dearest asked me to watch this documentary Secrets based on the famous novel uh, with the same title by Rhonda Byrne. So I checked it out to find out for myself what's this big secret that could ultimately change my life, right? I wasn't convinced though. The secrets that I am discovering bit by bit from the Quran is far more astonishing than this. But let's dissect it anyway to gain a better understanding of this uh, law of attraction. The law of attraction is not quite a new age idea. It has been around since the first century, uh, stemming from the Hermetic teachings. What is Hermetic teachings? I haven't deep dived into the subject. I'd have to do another video on that. Anywho. But what is this uh, law of attraction is based on? What's the basis of their belief? They claim that this law of attraction is based on the physics law of resonance. Right. Resonance in simple word is a phenomenon that occurs when the oscillation of an object matches with the force external oscillation of another object, resulting in increase of the amplitude of the object's oscillation. Not simple enough. <laughs> Let's take a look at this clip of this brother pushing the swing of both of his sisters. I'm assuming that's the brother. Brother's frequency of push matches with the original oscillation of the swing of his sister on the left, thus amplifying the oscillation of the sister's swing. On the other hand, he is not pushing the sister on the right as hard. Thus, her swing is not oscillating as high as the sister on the left. Taking resonance as the basis of their belief, Law of Attraction believes that when we set our mind to positivity, our body's energy will vibrate with the same frequency of the universe's energy, in tune, so to speak, thus amplifying our capability and potential. Hmm, interesting. As a student of science, I was intrigued, so I went and researched about it. Uh, law of Attraction is in fact a pseudoscience. They claim it to be both scientific and factual, but in fact, there is no scientific method nor any empirical research to support their claim. As I mentioned earlier, one thing doesn't sit well with me. We all know that this is not a perfect world that we're living in. Things don't always go as we envisage it. Truth is, there's a lot of things in this world that is out of my control. Fox Major, for example, the earthquake that took place in Turkey, Syria earlier this year. What if I was involved in that uh, earthquake? I lost my family, my wealth, my everything in that. Do I just manifest uh, my way out of it? Like say, I'm on a comfortable bed, I am binge watching Netflix. And was it my fault that it happened, although I've been manifesting correctly all this while, what did I do wrong? If I resorted to that, manifesting myself out of similar situations, in fact, the truth is I'm suppressing the reality, the weight of the situation, along with it, my emotions. And worse, my mental state is not prepared to handle any negative experience because my mind has been trained to be rosy, peachy all the time, to be positive, to the point of toxic positivity. James Stockdale is one of US military's highest ranking officers. During the height of Vietnam War, he was captured and held captive for a period of eight years between 1965 to 1973 tortured over 20 times during his eight years of imprisonment he finally got out he survived and he got out how
So this Stockdale paradox is based on a duality psychological belief. The first thing is you have to accept the brutal facts of the reality. The second thing is that you have to believe and have an unwavering faith of the end game that this brutal experience will end someday and you must commit to prevail despite the brutal facts so basically to say that when it's night accept that it's night don't go and put on your sunnies and make yourself believe that it's still daytime but continue to believe that the night will come to an end with the break of a new dawn tomorrow inshallah this positivity attracts positivity is definitely appealing. But to be honest, it's nothing new. In Islam too, we are taught to be grateful in every aspect of our life, thus inculcating positivity. But in addition, Islam furnishes us with a complete crisis guide. What to do, how to react in every step of the way. One of the most fundamental concepts in Islam that you have to grasp is that this dunya, this world, is a temporary training ground or a boot camp to earn your entry into paradise in the eternal life. That being said, it only makes perfect sense that there are all this negativity and bad experience that happens in this life to train you. And they are certain to happen. But we are given Quran as a comprehensive manual to support us every step of the way throughout the crisis. First, as a believer, we will surely be tested. Like I mentioned, that's the whole point, our purpose in this dunya. However, Allah assures us that He will not test us more than we can bear. The tests are personalized, tailor-made to suit our capability and strength. On top of that, Allah grants ease for us to go through the test, the hardships. Allah expands our chest to be more optimistic and accepting. Then, after we've made our efforts and did our part, we are asked to accept and leave everything into His divine intervention for the ultimate result. And He is the most merciful who only wants the best for us every time. Finally, if we remain grateful despite all the challenges, Allah promises to increase in our blessings. Now, this is the positivity aspect in Islam. If we remain positive for the page to turn after having put in our efforts and consequently ultimate surrender to Allah, then surely Allah will reward us for our gratitude, inshallah. Tell me, how many of us are grateful for the bad experience that we experienced in the past that taught us a very valuable lesson? So why then all this law of attraction from believers claim that positive things keep happening in their lives just because they manifested it? Well, for one, they set realistic expectations within the reach of their capabilities. Second, it's a thing called self-fulfilling prophecy in social psychology. Self-fulfilling prophecy is a sociological term used to describe the process by which a person's expectations can lead to that someone behaving in ways that ultimately confirms the expectations. Simple example to demonstrate this, we take an outgoing girl named Sarah goes to see a fortune teller and shares how she has not met anyone yet despite going out a lot. Sarah is then told that she will meet the man of her dreams in the next month. Sarah then amplifies her efforts of going out and always on the lookout for an interesting encounter. Sarah initiates conversations of every encounter and pushes through to see if the guy might be a potential husband. One of her encounters turn out to be significant. They fall in love and live happily ever after. Having met the man of a dream in the next month as prophesied by the fortune teller confirms Sarah's belief in the first place. Although it was Sarah's own action that led to the results in the end. The universe definitely is not the reason. To believe that the universe is capturing the energy that we emit and fulfilling all our wishes is a false idea. And to think that the universe is God and should be revered is pantheism and could lead to shirk, that is to share Allah's attributes to something or someone else. It is Allah that gives all of our sustenance. Yes, even to non-Muslims. Thank you guys for watching this video. I was rescued by Islam from my narcissistic personality disorder. Today I'm a jovial character who continuously seeks to deepen Islam. 
Alhamdulillah. It saddens me how this beautiful religion which transformed my life 360 is often misunderstood. So guys, please support my channel in my effort to portray the beautiful side of this religion, inshallah. All good comes from Allah, whatever shortcomings are of my own. Allah alam. Till next time, inshallah. <laughs>